Okay, so we're going to go through this exam question about the harbour process and then later on it goes to a little bit of moles. So first of all, let's read it together. Ammonia is manufactured in the harbour process. If this was me, I would highlight this to make sure that I knew it was about the harbour process. In this process, nitrogen reacts with hydrogen to make ammonia. Hydrogen and ammonia are obtained from the raw materials air, methane and steam. Hydrogen is obtained when methane reacts with steam. Very simple. First step is to balance the equation. Well, you can see over here you've only got one oxygen, but you've got two over here. So I'm going to try balancing my oxygens. What does that then do to my hydrogens? Well, I've got four hydrogens here, and I've got two times two hydrogens here. So two times two is four, plus another four is eight. Therefore, I need eight on this side. If I do 4, I've got 4 times 2, which also equals 8. Therefore, it's balanced. Part 2. Nitrogen can be obtained when hydrogen is burned in air. Name the substance removed from air when hydrogen burns. Air is made of 21% um, oxygen, 78% nitrogen, and 1% uh, other gases, including carbon dioxide and all of the... Uh, other noble gases. So what we want to do is we want to get rid of the oxygen so that we only have the nitrogen left. If we've only got the nitrogen and the other 1% gases, then we can use that nitrogen in the harbour process. So we burn the air with um, the water and we end up getting rid of the oxygen and we make just pretty much plain old nitrogen. We then use a scrubber in the harbour process to remove the 1% other gases. So um, this shows the condition inside the reaction vessel in the harbour process. So what you can see is the nitrogen goes in here and the hydrogen goes in here. They both go in here and here. In here, we have iron as a catalyst. We have 200 atmospheres and we have 450 degrees C. We can see that the ammonia comes out the other side. And then along here, this is any unreacted hydrogen and nitrogen that's recycled back again. So we'll call this the recycled nitrogen and hydrogen coming round. So the question is asking us to state and explain the purpose of iron in the reaction vessel. There's two command words there. First of all, we need to state the purpose for two marks. So we state the purpose. The purpose, it's there as a catalyst. Now we need to explain what catalysts do. Well, the iron is a catalyst and it increases the rate of reaction. Notice how I've written in bullet points there. That's perfectly acceptable in the exam. I've done a quick check. I know I have stated. Yes, I have explained the purpose. Two marks. Okay, so we're going to have a little look at the graph here. So I'm just going to change my pen colour. And I'm going to put on some dotted lines here. So you can see this is an energy level diagram. Nitrogen and hydrogen are the reactants, and ammonia is the products. So we can see here that nitrogen and hydrogen here, that's their energy level, and ammonia's energy level is here. Which one has more energy? My reactants have more energy than my products. Now, because my reactants have more energy than my products, that means that this amount of energy here must have been lost to the surroundings. So, therefore, the reaction is exothermic. So, it says, explain how the energy level diagram shows that the reaction is exothermic for two marks. The first mark is going to come by saying the reactants have less energy than the products. 
Oops, I am so sorry. They do not have less energy. The reactants have more energy than the products. You could also say the products have less energy than the reactants. Second mark is coming to say the excess energy or the surplus energy is lost to the surroundings. That's how we know that the uh, reaction is exothermic because the surroundings will warm up. Explain why a high temperature is needed to obtain a high rate of reaction. So what it's asked us to do, it says explain why a high temperature is needed for a high rate of reaction. Then it tells us exactly what we have to include. We must use ideas about movement of particles, energy of molecules, and activation energy. So you can see that there are three marks available and there are three things we need to talk about. So what we need to do is include in our answer details about movement, energy of molecules and activation energy for three marks. So the first one we're going to make about movement and we're going to say um, higher temperatures make uh, make particles move faster. Then we're going to talk about the energy. We're going to say because they have more energy. Then we're going to say more frequent collisions at or above the activation energy. In other words, we get more frequent collisions at or above the activation energy because the energy in the molecules is greater and they are moving faster. We've hit all three from the question. So a chemical produ company produces 3.4 times 10 to the 9 grams of ammonia. I'm going to highlight that so that I don't forget it. The equation for the reaction between nitrogen and hydrogen is shown. So we can see we've got one molecule of nitrogen for three molecules of hydrogen to make two molecules of ammonia. And the information that we've got is that the amount of uh, grams of ammonia is 3.4 times 10 to the 9 grams. Complete steps 1 to 4 to calculate the volume of hydrogen measured at room temperature. So we know there's four steps and eventually we'll calculate the volume. Okay, so step 1 is to show that the relative molecular mass of ammonia is 17. Well, you can see that they've given us some information here. If they hadn't given us that, we could find that information in the periodic table at the back of the paper, but they have. So up here, we can see that ammonia is made of one molecule of nitrogen and three molecules of hydrogen. So one molecule of nitrogen is 14, and we have three times one, because we have three lots of hydrogen. Add that together, it makes 17. Now you might very well be saying, well, why don't we double that? Because we've got two. If you must always remember in mole calculations that we, in, when we're working out relative molecular mass, we only use subscript numbers. When taking into account number of moles, we use big numbers. And for that, we'll look later on in the question. So we will use the big numbers, but we'll use them at the mole stage. We use the subscript numbers at the relative molecular mass stage. Calculate the number of moles of ammonia produced. So now we can use the relative molecular mass. We've got, and the amount of grams. So we've got mass, mole, MR triangle. Now we know the mass and we know the MR so we can calculate the number of moles. The mass is 3.4 times 10 to the 9. The relative molecular mass is 17 so we divide by 17. I'll just put that into my calculator. 3.4 times 10 to the 9 divided by 17 is equal to 2.0 times 10 to the 8. 
Now your calculator might return those eight zeros and you'll be tempted to write them down, but you'll very easily make a mistake if you write all of those zeros. The best way to write your answers for moles is in standard form. If you need any help on how to get your calculator to display standard form as the answer, go and see your maths teacher. They will help you with how to get your calculator displaying standard forms. So calculate the number of moles of hydrogen used. Well, for that, we need to go back up here to the um, equation. We know we have a three to two ratio of the hydrogen and nitrogen. So we have a three to two ratio. That means for every three moles of hydrogen, we've got two moles of ammonia. So we know the number of moles of ammonia is 2.0 times 10 to the 8. What we need to do now, because it's not a direct half or double, we need to divide by 2 to get what 1 moles worth is. So 2.0 times, 2 .0 times 10 to the 8 divided by 2 is 1.0 times 10 to the 8. Then we need to times it by 3. So times by 3 because we've got 3 lots of 1. And that will equal 3.0 times 10 to the 8. So the number of moles of hydrogen in our 3 to 2 ratio is 3.0 times 10 to the 8. Then we calculate the volume of hydrogen used. For that, we need a different magic triangle. We need... A vol, mole, 24 triangle. So we know the number of moles. We know the molecular volume of one mole of gas is 24. So we can work out the volume. We do 3.0 times 10 to the 8 times by 24. That gives us... 4.8 times 10 to the 9 decimeters cubed, or 4800000000. But again, don't write the zeros because you're liable to get an order of magnitude out. Hope that was helpful to explaining how we answered that exam question. I'll see you next time. Bye.